Dona mi miért ez a de Brooks TV inkonyányi szolgáltatói? És az én nevem Agnes Moller. Lássuk az eheti tartalmat. Leg bennük a formú, ez a Didi Sale United Nations. Felkutatjuk, hogyan érintik a nemzetközi diákokat a változó vízunk vetelménye. Mi fa india nutatále ás molyen. A dawa fe gedo le United Nations si le hihia megodo. E ye enya ame gedo fe didi be wa wa dona UN. Gake e do didi sena ame o pole school vio. Ingrid Florin, the UN World Food Program tan ofe le Roma va kuyname. The World Food Program is a United Nations agency that specializes in improving the food situation for people suffering in developing countries, both as long-term support as well as in emergency situations. Over the last 10 years, the number of interns and volunteer applications have increased, but the number of those accepted has decreased. I spoke to Anne Callahan of Human Resources to find out why. Each year we have about 3,000 applicants for interns and volunteers. Of those who are qualified, uh, on average, and according to the requests we get, we place 240. There's been a huge increase in the number of applications over the last 10 years. Is this because of an increase in funds? It's basi basically an increase in interest. I'd say 10 years ago we would have had maybe one or two interns. Now we may be having 50 interns in head headquarters at a time. The WFP relies heavily on government donations. Since donors can choose what their money goes towards, I asked Mary Lynn Joseph of Donor Relations if they specify if they want WFP to hire young people. There is a program under which donors are able to have young people work for WFP, which is called the Junior Professional Officer, which is GPO. So this is how um, uh, donors are funding uh, a post within the BFP from one, for one of their nationals. And usually um, this is for, for people that are not above 32 or 33 years old. Due to recent emergencies like Haiti and Japan, the WFP has been getting more money from donors to spend on programs in the field. When you have emergencies, natural disasters, war-affected um, beneficiaries, then of course you know, we, ha we get a little bit more support from donors. Not all young people want to work in headquarters. For many, the attraction lies in working in the field. These are the country and regional offices of the World Food Program that do day-to-day -day programming, implementation and monitoring of food situations in 92 developing countries. You, you have to be, you know, in the field, in the first lines. I mean, you learn twice what you learn in another place. Working for um, the World Food Program, you know, your obligation is to go to the field at some point and have that experience because you have to see what we do. Working from a desk, you know, doesn't give you the full perspective. There are several ways of getting into the United Nations. As an intern, but you must currently be studying something relevant. As a volunteer, which is unpaid on a fellowship where you are sponsored by your own government, as a consultant where your contracts usually aren't long term, or as a UN volunteer where you must have at least three years relevant work experience. With so many different ways in, why is it still so difficult to get a placement? WFP is only recruiting personnel where there is an identified gap in our capacities. So what do uh, our interviewees expect from the future? Well, I hope uh, to stay within WFP for the for the at least this year and next year. Whatever I can get offered, I'll take it because you know what? I know how bad it is. I know how competitive it is. I know how many people want the same thing that I'm trying to get. I, I, my plan was to just to, to have a break, a small break, and to go to the field again. I asked them what advice um, they would give to prospective candidates. Advice I would give to any job seeker because as an intern, your ultimate goal is to get a job. Do what you like. To have passion about some topic in general. Whatever you can get offered, you, you better take it. Really look at the job. What, what do you want and what do you expect from, from that job and that organization? I've met some people who've been here for three years as a volunteer. More and more students are interested in working for humanitarian agencies. But with the current application and recruitment trend, will they still be able to find jobs in organizations like the World Food Program? Or will they have to volunteer for unknown periods of time instead? Ingrid Flern, Brooks TV, Rome.
Így Róma után egy angliai témára fókuszálunk. A brit kormány megváltoztatta a vízunkvetelményeket az Európán kívüli állampolgárok számára. De mi is változott meg pontosan, és mégis ez hogyan befolyásolja a nemzetközi diákokat? Juan Nader utána járt a témának. As the school year gets to an end, student efforts to get a job in the UK are rising. Due to new visa regulations, international non-EU students who are under a tier 4 visa and want to stay working in the UK have only four months after their studies to get a job. Brooks TV talked to Varun Srinivasan, a student who is in this situation. Well, I was hoping uh, I would get a job, but uh, though with the things that have changed now, it it's not that pleasing as one would have thought of. The new regulations say that you can only switch to a tier 4 visa only if you meet all the following requirements. You must have current leave which has not expired in one of these eligible categories and must have successfully completed and passed a UK recognized degree. Also, you must apply it inside the UK. As it is a point-based system, you will need to have a certain salary to earn points. So, what is his reaction to these changes? Right now I feel uh, confused a bit because things are really not that clear and and a bit scared. But hopefully I get a clear picture in the next three months. Like him, the university is still getting to grips with Tier 2 and as soon as they get more information, they will give advice to students and organize information sessions for those who need to. So. Besides knowing the new requirements the government has issued for those Tier 4 visa students, the only actions they can take right now is to use the university resources and wait. Wait until they get a job that pays the money they need to stay and also wait to see the further requirements to apply for the Tier 2 visa and decide whether or not they stay in the UK. Juan Nader reporting for Brooks TV. UK, <laughs> Le H. Mullien, E. Antonia Nutala, Constantin Gross, Kunyasiame. Art, they say, is the expression of inner beauty to the outside world. Howard Hodkin, a passionate collector of Indian paintings and a painter as well, has decided to share the refreshing beauty of his collections over two decades at the Shmolian Museum. The exhibition, dubbed Visions of Mughal India, presents for the first time in its entirety the outstanding private collection of Indian paintings of one of the leading artists of our time. I think anyone who is interested in both immensely high quality and distinctive art combined with a particular vision that's brought it together will benefit from seeing the exhibition because you understand not just something more about a very important period of art, 16th to 19th century Indian art, but also about a mind that's appreciated enough, loved it enough over 50 years to bring it together in one place. Hotgen has been a passionate collector of Indian paintings since his school days, and his collection has long been considered one of the finest of its kind in the world. At times, he has devoted almost as much effort to developing his collection as to his own work as a painter. Proudly on display were rare gems that literally took away the breath of the audience at the exhibition. It's uh, quite calm and quite peaceful. Um, there's enough room for everybody. Um, I think it works as a space. I just admire the industry and, and uh, particular, uh, my particular favourites are the ones with an architectural interest. It's like a, an illustration from a book. So you know when you've got that experience, so you're looking at an illustrated book and you can have it really close and you can look at it with a story. The exhibition, which has been ongoing since February, had a climax of Sir Howard Hodkin talking about his Indian painting collections in an interview driven by Professor Rana Mitter. This gave the opportunity to the audience to ask questions about his fascinating collections on display at the Ushmolian Gallery and to share some of his personal experiences as an art collector and painter. This was a great opportunity to see the entire collections at once and hopefully there will be a next time for those who missed it. Konstantin Gross reporting for Brooks TV. A Science Museum of Oxford minden évben megszervezi a nemzetközi Marconi napot. Marconi volt a vezeték nélküli kommunikáció feltalálója, ami manapság már körbehálózza az egész világot. Az esemény több érdekes programmal szolgált. Chloe Bissenius tudósít. We all take the wireless technology for granted today, but it's only been 100 years since the concept was first introduced. Among the people who studied the subject was the Irish-Italian scientist who worked in England, Guillermo Marconi. 
Augustus Museum of History of Science has organized a program to commemorate the Marconi Day. I went to see what it was all about. Well, every year we do a Marconi Day. We have a very fine collection of Marconi material uh, from the Marconi Corporation came here in the year 2005 or so. We have a lot of original stuff that Guglielmo Marconi brought to England in the late 19th century. Fantastic stuff. It just started the wireless technology. But he brought together a lot of uh, technologies that uh, he could apply to a commercial radio service. I mean, he had a broadcasting service before the BBC, for example. So the Marconi name became very much associated with radio. Um, and because of that, he it popularly, people think of Marconi as the inventor of radio, which isn't really true, but he's certainly the most prominent early practitioner. The programme included activities such as sending Morse code messages by wired telegraph and an auction of Marconi memorabilia. In addition, there was a talk about wireless at the time of Titanic, where Marconi played a significant role, and also a little play called Who Was Guglielmo Marconi, which presented the different personas of a famous scientist. The Marconi Day is also the opportunity for the local Oxford Amateur Radio Society to set their station at the museum and to connect with other groups all around the world. Every year on International Marconi Day we have a, a special amateur radio station and you can probably hear it in the background and they're making contact with stations all over the world and when you do have a contact frequently you can exchange a card. This goes back to the 30s um, when the, the pathways were being opened up, often by amateurs and uh, it proved that you've done it. The unusual interactive activities have attracted a lot of people of different ages and proved to be educational as well as fun for the whole family. Brooks TV, Chloe Bizenius. As you might realize, I'm speaking Hungarian and sorry speaking Eva because she's from Ghana. I yeah. think there is no one in the world who can speak these both languages. Yeah, that's because we wanted to give you an international experience. But let's change back to Eva. Yeah. Nukwalawe, mi imi diako, ape mi ayila. Megint eljú voltunk egy spanyol táncos nőt. Brazilian akkor jéjé, de dup. Nukwalawe mi awezo, mi afonuna Natalia Sandra Linares, Spanish flamenco nyonu ade wadula de le Oxford, wana da biagbe. Hola Natalia, ¿cómo estás? Hola, Bienvenida. ¿qué tal? Muy bien. Eh, Natalia, muchísimas gracias por estar con nosotros. Okay, eh, un placer. <laughs> muchísimas gracias. Quisiéramos hablar contigo y preguntarte cómo ha sido tu vida en Oxford este tiempo, cómo es para el flamenco. ¿Cómo ves el flamenco en Oxford? Entonces, quisiera Bien. que nos, nos contaras un poco acerca de ello. Pues yo llegué hace siete meses aquí a Oxford. Yo soy de Sevilla, de Andalucía, en el sur de España. Y vine más que todo para aprender inglés y trabajar un poquito y cambiar así de aire. Y la verdad es que el flamenco aquí le llama mucho la atención a la gente. En plan, siempre la comida y el, y el flamenco le gusta mucho a la gente. La comida. Sí, que es la lo comida que más española es lo que más. Y yo lo que más he hecho de menos, la verdad. Sí. Sí, he hecho de menos mucho la comida española. Entiendo que se reúnen, hacen reuniones la comunidad española. Sí, en, tenemos, en Facebook tenemos una página que se llama Española en Ofo y ahí sobre todo nos ayudamos entre todos mucho. Si necesitamos una habitación o necesitamos un trabajo o algo, entre todos nos ayudamos ahí. Ah, es bastante variado. Sí, y cada último jueves del mes, en el va a Tarifa en Cauli. Nos reunimos, se reúnen un grupito de tres personas y que cantan flamenco y tocan la guitarra y allí nos reunimos mucho español, la mayoría somos andaluces, y, pero vienen también muchas personas de Inglaterra y que de en verdad les gusta mucho el tema del flamenco, la guitarra, el taconeo, las palmas, les llama mucho la atención. Ah. Sí. Y la pasada semana, el jueves, estuvimos en Lava, una discoteca que hicieron como un pequeño homenaje a nosotros sobre la Feria de Abril, que es ahora en Sevilla. Ah. Y vinieron tres personas a cantar y allí estuvimos como si fuera una pequeña casita de feria, bebiendo, bailando. Y la verdad que lo pasamos súper bien, nos trasladaron un poquito sobre esa, esa noche a Andalucía. Ah, oh, qué bueno, sí, me alegro sí, mucho. O sea, que se vive muy bien sí, en el flamenco sí, sí. en Oxford, la gente sí, lo recibe muy bien. Sí, aparte alegra, este año vemos muchos españoles aquí, muchos andaluces. 
Sí. ¿Y, ¿Y por qué crees que, que se da eso, el viaje de los españoles? Pues este año estamos migrando mucho la gente porque España está en crisis y no hay trabajo para nada, hay mucho recorte en el tema de la educación y la gente acaba de estudiar y, y lo que quiere es probar cosas nuevas y, y trabajar. Y allí en España ahora mismo no hay nada de oportunidad. Este yeah. año dice que se ha duplicado el doble de personas que emigra contando wow. con otro año. Wow. Sí. ¿Y crees que puedes...? Hacer más flamenco en Inglaterra. Yo, la verdad, me gustaría inculcar... Bueno, está, está bastante inculcado. Aparte hay una mujer aquí, se llama Marita Varga, que es inglesa, pero se fue a Jerez de la Frontera a aprender flamenco y tiene una propia academia aquí ah, suya, sí. Perfecto. Y yo me gustaría, pues, más o menos yo montar una, lo que pasa es que acabo de llegar, tengo que aprender un poco más inglés, claro, buscarme un claro, local, claro. pero la verdad es que sí Muchas me gustaría. Gracias. Qué pena interrumpirte no, <risa> todo el tiempo que hemos tenido. Muchísimas gracias por, por tu tiempo. Vale, gracias a ustedes. Egy klasszikus tánc után jöjjön valami teljesen más, érdekes nézni és addiktív folytatni. A kapujárának egyre nő a népszerűsége a hazáján, Brazílián kívül. De mi is ezt kérdezhetik? Ilyen de Szúza elmagyarázza. A Bolikau Oxford Capoeira has been running for 13 years now and has a large number of regular attending students. Capoeira is a Brazilian martial art that was created and built on the traditions of African slaves that were brought over to Brazil in the 16th century. Capoeira isn't easily classified and involves a combination of skills such as fight, dance, music and art and is known for being very physical. It's good for fitness, uh, you learn some cool moves. Uh, good sort of community background to it especially with this group like everyone's very sociable and that and yeah there's a lot more to it than just sort of training uh well it's great training um physically uh and, and mentally because you've got to be because it's, it's playful as well that's a really nice thing about it. the real action starts in the hollow the circle and involves two people playing capoeira while the others play music and stand around to make the circle the capoeira is all improvised and there's no choreography The capitalists read each other's news to avoid collision, and in this version there is no contact, only playing. Even though Aboli Cal tries to teach capoeira as closely as it's practiced in Brazil, there remains a major difference, mainly due to a cultural divergence. It to be just a, a sort of thing we people do after their work for maybe fitness or social, um, a social thing like that. Whereas in Brazil, especially for a lot of the people there, it's uh, it's really their life, you know. So that it's much more part of their life. They're training all the time, and they take it maybe quite a lot more seriously. Not only does Abu Likau Capoeira teach people the martial art, it also is involved in many different projects, such as charity work. We've got our trust based in South Africa and Brazil. Uh, we raise some money, obviously, to get try to get the kids to school and stuff. Yeah, it's pretty much. What we do. Does, does that make you feel good? It does make me feel good because I want to make other. I want to know that money goes towards the kids so they can practice capoeira and go to schools and stuff. Along with raising money for children, Abolikau organise and attend many events all around the UK and the world. Well, we have a yearly batizado where you get your new belt, um, and there's like trips to Brazil and South Africa, but I'm only 15, so. I need to raise the money and I need to be allowed to go because it's quite dangerous and stuff. There's always outside stuff, people you know, we're on Facebook and, and uh, we've got a, a forum so people are always posting things like, oh yeah, we're going, you know, sometimes it's a pub trip, sometimes it's a cinema trip, so non-capoeira stuff. <laughs> Capoeira continues to grow in popularity and now thrives all around the world, including Oxford. This is Ian D'Souza Callahan reporting for Brooks News. Oxford, the land of the city 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 Igazad van, nézzük, mi is történt a konyhában, de mindenek előtt nézzünk körül, hol is lehet beszerezni jó nemzetközi alapanyagokat. Foods offered in supermarkets in England are often different to ones offered in other countries. We went out in Oxford to discover what kind of shops offer ingredients for cooking international dishes. For this occasion, we decided to share some traditional dishes from all over the world. 
To make the experience more interesting, we invited our friends to share our meals. The first dish we had was a traditional Ghanaian dish. The second dish we decided to get the taste of Colombia. And the third stayed a little closer to Britain and had a Croatian dish. Therma is a traditional dish from Eastern Europe and I've been eating it from early childhood. It takes a long time to cook, but once it's made, it can be consumed, reheated even a week after. It can be eaten alone or with a side dish like mashed potatoes. I was surprised that I could find all the ingredients even here in Oxford and I hope people will like it. For my meal, I decided to prepare banku and okra stew, which is a delicacy from Ghana, where I come from. It is something I learned from my mother. Basically, it's made up of potato starch and cornmeal. You use any kind of meat you like and spinach or kuntumri. We usually have this in the evening. It depends on you. You can have it in the morning or afternoon. For my leaves, I use spinach, but in Ghana we use the contumbre. But because I couldn't get that here, I use the spinach as a substitute. What I cooked was patacón con ogao. And ogao, it's a traditional sauce from my country, which is basically onion, garlic, and tomato. Patacón is a traditional dish from Colombia. It's plantain, not bananas. I followed my grandma's recipe and started to make them the way she did it. I think I put my own taste when I put a bit more onions and tomato on it, which everyone liked it, I think. Once all the dishes were prepared, the fun part started as well, all began to taste different dishes. Afterwards, we got feedback from everyone about how the thoughts dishes were and the success of the night. La, la nourriture était assez originale. J'avais jamais mangé du, du, uh, de l'estomac de, de bœuf. Még sosem ettem kézzel, tehát mindenki kézzel levett, azért az, az egész vicces volt. Die van Juan was echt um, lekker, maar ik had het gewoon niet verwacht. Dus het was heel erg onverwacht. Dus die van Juan vond ik um, het beste. Ja, het was heel erg goed. En eu eu achei hoje à noite um sucesso. Also, buying food ingredients which are common to international people may be difficult in Oxford. With a little bit of searching, you can still make and achieve great food like that made in the countries. This is Olivier Fuso reporting for Brooks TV. Oh, this food was amazing, but I especially like your one. Uh, who taught you this? My mom taught me how to do that. I could teach you sometime. Mm, it would be lovely. <laughs> yeah, anytime. A Marston Royal British Legion április 26-án 8 órától a swingrajongoknak kedvez. Felép a The Velvet Tones és a The Little Oxford Big Band. A belépés ingyenes lesz. Ne wa dudu George na wa la wa ton wa pe mi na se ha vivio cho big band Cuba big band DJ le old fire station George Street Fida Cake Boy April 27 eho wa no bu bu cho fi anga eni wa he pon adele agodo Lady Hawk az új zélandi énekezene szerző április 27-én 7 órakor fellép az O2 Academy Oxford színpadán a belépő 14 font lesz fejenként Sankukula Kayalan la wato wando to Craig Olgen le Sheldonian Theatre Choga Dre Plafa e wato wando to Rohan de Saram Pole Jonathan Paul le Jacqueline Dupree Music Building le Fida Kebbo April 27 Choga ni wa he pon e wo la gbodo school bi wa he pon ato az Electrinkus zene rajongói április 27-én este 11 és hajnali 3 között találkozhatnak a cellárban egy HQ tram és bassz összejövetelre. A belépő 5-6 font lesz. Ezen kívül bármikor írhatnak e-mailt a brookstv.ac.uk-ra. Bármilyen hír szívesen fogadunk. Pacsi kacsint!